Okay. Okay, hey guys, drop a subscribe, like. <laughs> <laughs> drop a subscribe. Gently place a subscribe. <laughs> Carefully lower a like button. Use your thumbs up to, to hit the subscribe button. <laughs> <laughs> so are you going to vertical take off or just yeah, use the plane feature? Plane. Um, plane. I'm going to test multi-copter right now. Multi-copter, so all of them? Um, no, we'll see. Hey, let's what, what happened? The battery is low? It's not harming. I hate this about Pixog. Listen, I check everything, I arm it, you know, everything goes fine. And then I, I go to the field, I try to arm it, and there's an error. Hmm. There's some error. Like, Must I be the field the error. All you gotta do is include that line in the code. If in field arm. If in field arm. <laughs> <laughs> if airplane crashing, <laughs> don't. <laughs> I I end up having to calibrate the oh wait hold on. What is it? Some more lights showing up and then I just didn't hit the arming switch. Pretty much a master of pick socket this point. Okay, so what happened in the last project log, if you guys didn't watch it, was uh first first why wouldn't you watch it? It's great. The comedy's on point. I mean the production value is amazing. Okay, but actually what happened was uh the airframe got built tried our initial hover test and went out to the field for the transition test and this is where we're at right now. I'm pretty sure you guys remember the dramatic ending. Uh, basically what happened was the aircraft was incredibly unstable once we switched it to airplane mode but this is what's so great about transitioning at a really high altitude. If in airplane mode something went wrong we just switched it back over to a multi-copter mode since we knew that multi-copter mode was stable and that basically saved us and we saw uh, once we went over to the airplane it was just chilling up there doing its own little thing. He said, now we're going to try to land. There we go. There we go. It's coming down. Is this an automatic mode? No, it's just e e mode. At land. See? Nice and easy. Nah, that was like really good. Did you see what happened? That it was really good. It upside down. It did the roll thing again. Really? Yeah. I forgot that I had it in manual mode. Uh -huh. So I touched the stick and it just went like. Uh -oh. You don't want to crash it. Let's go back. It was good. Let's go back. You gonna try it again? Oh. Flying it there. Remember it, Hulk? My god, I'm freezing, man. Oh the wind chill makes it like 10 degrees Fahrenheit. It's crazy. Yeah, Texas, Californians, California. what y'all know about this? <laughs> Texas, yeah. what y'all know about this? <laughs> I mean, yeah, we prevented a crash, but we still didn't really have a successful flight. So the goal was simple get a good flight in airplane mode down. Low battery, 24% remaining. Low battery, 17% remaining. Low battery, return to land at 5. Low battery, 8% remaining. Critical battery, return to launch at 5. Low battery, 6% remaining. Dangerous battery level, landing at 5. Okay, and transition. Okay, okay, well, let's take a step back. We've just had two tests now and both of them ended up the same way. The aircraft was incredibly unstable even though it was on stability mode. Let's set up a little background first. Firstly, there's an annoying lack of documentation online about the VTOL. Or whatever documentation there is, it's wrong. He's a liar. Let the kid talk. Can you live with yourself? For example, online on the Pixhawk website, it says that the two elevons have to be connected to servo output 3 and 4. This is not the case, it has to be connected to 5 and 6. It took me a week to figure this out. And when I first heard this, I lost it. Just like how the Pats lost the Super Bowl. Oh my god, this can't be touch that. Oh, Tom Brady, what are you doing? You need to go. And also, the airspeed indicator has to be connected. Oh yeah, even if you do the circuit breaker thing, the airspeed indicator has to be there or the aircraft will never complete a transition. The The reason for this is because airspeed and ground speed are not the same thing. Tell me this, have you guys ever been flying your flying wing outside, it's a windy day, you're flying into the wind and the aircraft is basically hovering? You can probably tell why, but most people would go like, wow, what, it's not moving at all, how can the airplane stay in the air? Aircrafts don't generate lift based on uh, how fast they are going relative to the earth, it's based on how 
how much air is moving over the wings. So let's put it this way, you're putting down a thrust that would usually speed the aircraft up to 8 meters per second in ground speed, but you also have 8 meters per second of wind directly heading onto the aircraft. So essentially both of those cancel out and your ground speed is zero but your airspeed is still 8 meters per second. This is why Pixhawk requires you to have an airspeed sensor. But the thing is, it would be pretty useful if they told you that you needed to have an airspeed sensor. I, I think this one's actually a bug, but on my switches, on the top one I had stabilized, on the middle one I had manual mode, and on the bottom one I had mission or something like that. If you have your stick in stabilized when you arm the aircraft, it is not actually in stabilized mode, it's in manual or something like that. You have to switch out of manual and back into stabilized. This is why we crashed two times and the aircraft was incredibly unstable. So after I found that out, I went outside for another test. Gotta bring it back and do an airplane transition, helicopter transition. Oh, okay. There it is. And now we just gotta land. I do not know about you guys, but I consider that a success. Is you blind? It went from airplane mode to helicopter mode and then back multi-rotor mode to airplane mode back to multi-rotor mode and the only problem it had was it's too windy right now imagine like a full foam board while I do sound a little delirious here's the point I'm trying to make airplanes are very aerodynamic so they don't have a lot of drag in comparison to this if you take a flat surface and put it against the wind there's a lot more surface area and as a result there's a lot more drag if we really want to be technical parasitic drag but anyways I'm pretty sure most of you have stuck your hand out of a car window so you know what I'm talking about it's really hard to stabilize that and it was doing a really good job of it in the first place so hats off to Pixhawk and their team Good enough for me. So at this point, the project was pretty much ending. I tuned the aircraft up a little bit and gave it a little robustness test indoors since it was really cold outside and there was no one inside the building. Anyways, so the next day I demoed it to the professor and that one went as well. Still airplane. Airplane, airplane, airplane. It's coming towards us now. Here's the pilot. Transition. Here's the transition. Alright. Slowly. Yeah, slowly. Do control. Control itself. So, so this project is kind of but not yet over. Remember that lack of documentation I was talking about? Well I decided to do something about it and I wrote a little something up online. The link will be in the description. But more importantly, the professor and I both observed that there was a max angle that the aircraft could be in before it was too late to regain control. These are connected to a couple things. First, the center of gravity, the weight of the aircraft, the size of the control surfaces, and the amount of air moving over said control surfaces. Basically, the 
the idea is that you have a lever arm and the control surfaces are the amount of torque being applied on the lever arm. If you have enough torque, you will be able to pick it up or rotate it. The idea is that you have a set throttle for cruising, you have a set throttle for landing, and from here you can figure out how much air is moving over the wings. You guys can see where I'm going with here. You have multiple variables. You can set up an equation from this, and this is what the next video is going to be about. Basically, we're going to set up the equation and then solve for control surface area or solve for max angle that we can be at, so on and so forth. Obviously, this isn't really the equation. That's what the next video is going to be about. I think this would be very useful for VTOL and for designing VTOL aircraft. Again, thanks for watching. It's really humbling to see people coming back video after video. Quick shout out to my brother. He was the cameraman for most of the clips that you watched. Also, if you're wondering what happened to the high altitude balloon project, basically whenever I'm trying to do testing off of that parking lot garage, it's raining. Last Sunday it was raining, this Sunday it's raining. So that's why it's taken a while. All right, thanks for stopping by though. Uh, so I'm trying to use my Twitter more often too, so you can go ahead and follow me there. I might have an Instagram too, I don't know, we'll see.